Hello and welcome to another episode with the Nairobi Hospital. Today I'm joined by nurse Sophia Njoroge, who has been working at the vaccination center for close to 11 years. And she will be taking us through the immunization or, or what immunization is all about. Karibu sana, Sophia. Thank you so, so much. So to start us off, maybe you could tell us about immunization, also referred to as vaccination. Uh, basically immunization, it's, it's an artificial way whereby you're trying to create resistance to infection in your body. So you're given a vaccine that will produce white body cells or what we call antibodies so that your body, once you're attacked by that same disease, the body is able to remember and produce those antibodies and fight. You've heard of people saying, Oh, she was able to fight, she's resistant, she has immunity against this disease. So when you, mean, you immunize people, you give them immunity, you make their immune system more stronger to be able to fight diseases. That's why when babies are born, they have an immune system, but it's weak. It, it doesn't have any antibodies to fight against diseases. That's why they require immunization or and they how, require vaccines. Okay. Yeah. How important is immunization in children? It's really important. Most of the diseases that children get, they are basically diseases that can be prevented. So you basically give vaccines to prevent. And we've talked of diseases like tuberculosis, which we know can kill. We've talked about diseases like tetanus, polio. These are diseases that we've heard about. And of course, when your diseases have been prevented, your health is promoted and it's better. You're able to live a better life. You're able to pass through the age of, you know, to go under the five and be old. Yes. More often than not, we mm -hmm. associate vaccination or immunization mm -hmm. to be only important to children. But adults do require it. So what are the factors that determine what kind of vaccination mm -hmm. an adult needs? Uh, there are many factors that will, de that will determine what type of vaccine you will get as an adult. One, we can talk about age. As you grow older, basically your immune system weekends. That's why you're seeing in older people, we really recommend they get like vaccines like flu vaccine, pneumonia vaccine, because those, they are more prone and they will die more of pneumonia or when they get the disease, it will complicate more and become worse with age. There could be other lifestyle, like people who travel a lot, uh, and where they are traveling to, there are diseases that they can be preventable, like rabies. You've heard of people who like they work in uh, in forest or in very wild areas where the the rabies is there. So we have rabies vaccine. People talk of yellow fever vaccine, very famous. So like sometime back in Kenya, there was an outbreak of yellow fever, not in the entire country, but in places like uh, Baringo the Rift Valley, Baringo County. So Kenya was ranked as one of key country whereby it's, it's, it's uh, at risk of getting a fever. So if you're traveling also, there are people who require the cholera vaccines, you're eating in hotels or even, remember these are waterborne, foodborne diseases, hepatitis A, because you're also traveling, people like the soldiers, even occupational. You know, occupations determine what type of vaccines you get. Like our Kenya defense team, you know, people working in Somali, protecting us, they're always in fights and they're getting cuts, tetanus, those are vaccines they require to keep getting. Other factor is other diseases. Uh, you're having diseases like diabetes, HIV, uh, cancer, basically for cancer patients, when you get chemotherapy and radiotherapy, your immune system is weakened. All the drugs you're given kills all the cells, whether normal and abnormal cells. So your body becomes like of that small child who does not have any immune. So you basically require the vaccines from the start. You see like the way you started from the diphtheria, the polio, they get all of them so that they're able now to be protected and build another immune system again. Mm -hmm. 
for them to be able to not to get disease when they get attacked. We've talked about pregnant women, we are giving vaccines like tetanus, we are giving also yellow fever, I mean not yellow fever, the flu vaccine. So all those factors determine. Okay. Yeah. So what are the potential threats as a country we could face mm -hmm. if at all we have a larger population that is not immunized? Well, the threats are, they are there and they are bad. For example, disease outbreaks which can kill. We've had outbreaks of polio and uh, what happens is that, uh, remember these diseases, they come in different strains. For example, polio has different uh, strains. So some time back, we identified a type of polio that was not there in the vaccination schedule. And uh, if a child had not gotten, it meant now that those people, anyone who got into exposure, will get that disease. So people get sick, measles, babies even die. Sometime back when we didn't have the rotavirus vaccine for the baby, the one that prevents diarrhea and vomiting in small, in young babies under the five years, most children used to die, many of them. But when you give vaccines, when you vaccinate quite a large number of children, the effect of that vaccination is able to be passed even to other people, to other children. So it's a plus. But when you do not vaccinate, mass vaccination, it means now the community will be at risk, very big risk. Just recently in New York, like two weeks ago, we had people, this outbreak of measles because people had been afraid of vaccinating. So what's happening right now? Outbreak. Treating the disease, it's more expensive than even vaccinating. And of course, the worst thing is when you're not even able to treat, because remember, when you treat, someone can recover or they can fail to recover, and they can complicate as well, or they can die. Yeah, so the impact is, is even worse. And it's sad to hear that someone will die because of diarrhea, pneumonia, yeah. and yet we have the vaccines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Riding on the point that you have uh, noted of New York, the missiles mm -hmm. outbreak, mm -hmm. we cannot, con you wouldn't expect that from a developed country. Yes. So this boils down to the misconceptions yes. on vaccinations. Mm -hmm. What can you say about that? Lack of appropriate and the correct information because what happens if maybe in a village, River Road, New York, which is a developed country, if somebody said, my baby got a swelling because of a vaccination, which we know is a common side effect, babies will get a bit of swelling, they may get, if you give measles, they may get a rash, they may get fever with most, almost all vaccines. So when the community or the public do not have the right information, if anything happens to the baby, for example, the things that are supposed to happen, that are usual, if they happen, they will say it's because of this vaccine that my baby got a swearing and I won't go for the vaccine. So if you tell another mother the same, they will say I will not take my child for that. So I think as a healthcare providers, we've got a very big role, even as people working in the social media, in whichever platform we're able to disseminate information and disseminate the correct information about vaccination is very important so that we're able to, to close the gaps of people believing things that are not true, having myths and stigma. And we should just come out, just like the way UNICEF have come out and they really support vaccination because they know that vaccine really work it is true they've done research and i think we need to be consistent as well because there are many things that are coming we need to keep updating any new information that we get we need to tell the public disseminate it in the right way maybe you could highlight some of the services in line with vaccination that nairobi hospital offers well, we've got quite a number uh, and I keep saying when mothers are coming for their checkups, vaccinations are done on daily basis. When they are coming for family planning, we are having, if you come to the Anderson Clinic, uh, in other outpatients, we have uh, pediatric services, we have uh, 
of course we've got the laboratory and the x-ray and the pharmacy and other than that in relation to vaccination we have when you come to the diabetes clinic we will strongly talk about when we have you come to our hiv clinic we will strongly talk about vaccines because these are things that are going hard in hand with vaccinations yeah so anytime you finish your chemotherapy we will be there to tell you what vaccines you require because we want you we want your health to go back to where it was and to be normal and not for you to be cured of cancer and then the next minute you're getting pneumonia no we want you to have a very a very full life and health full health yeah and that's it from this month's segment with the Nairobi Hospital. For further information, kindly do visit Nairobi Hospital and its satellite clinics. Thank you very much, Sophia, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank Karibu. you. Karibu.